Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, slice-of-life protagonists at an art college, strange, childish girls with amazing art ability, mysterious occupations that pay a lot of money, Rococo art projects that seem impossible, the need for meat to be in your diet, and unrequited love. Listener discretion is advised. Spark and Mong Review, episode 385, Honey and Clover. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Monger View. I'm your host Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Hope all of you out there have been very safe and happy during this crazy time that we live in, which is 2020. Hope you're well and hope you're excited to hear some awesome manga stuff, manga news, manga releases, and everything involving manga. But beforehand, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Spark is a podcast that... Pr- provides informative reviews about connectly enhanced narratives well actually it's some podcasts and bang reviews about connectly enhanced narratives in every episode we talk about one or two geeky topics and i tell you the pros and cons about it and since this is the manga review obviously we're talking about manga i tell you how the art style is the overarching plot the characters and if it's worth investing your time in or not you don't have to create anything i my co-host say but we try to be educational enlightening exciting and most importantly entertaining all 384 of our previous episodes can be found at www.spirekin.com, where you can also find our movie review, game review, anime review, con review, and other podcasts that www.spirekin.com comes up with. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Stitcher, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-A-K-N, and I guarantee you'll find us one way or into the other. We are also on Discord. If you look at the show notes, that has our Discord link, and you can join it and actually contribute to the podcast by recommending manga for the Wheel of Manga and also comment on the various things that we're doing on the podcast. And finally, if you have any comments or concerns, you can email me personally at zan, that's X-A-N, at spirekin.com. So now that that's all the way, let's actually get to it because we've got a lot to talk about this week because it has been a crazy week for news. So let's get to the manga news of the week. So the first one's actually kind of cool. Uh, manga artist Bunny Urasawa revealed on Twitter on this past Saturday that they have the eye condition known as low vision and that their manga, Minai wa Tashi no Koi wa Fujiu, or I Cannot See and My Love is Impaired, draws from their personal experience with this condition. Now, according to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, uh, they define low vision as vision loss that cannot be corrected by medical or surgical treatment or conventional eyeglasses. Now, a person with low vision has to learn to adjust to it. And... Um, they revealed this in the context of discussing a review they received on August 24th, which claimed to be written by a person who works at an eye clinic and accused the manga of not doing their research. And in reply, uh, Bunny Urasawa said, I drew this manga hoping that it could be an entertaining romance manga while at the same time educating more people about low vision. I hope it can spread awareness that people with this condition exist in reality. And if someone says I work at an eye clinic and this is an implausible story, then that's a terribly disappointing possibility that I could prompt people to give up reading out of a belief in this fictional story is a lie. The protagonist's low vision exists in real life, and there are many people who suffer from this condition. I also have the condition, so I can assure you that it is not a made-up story or a lie. I hope that everyone who comes across this work understands this fact. Now, uh, Minai wa Tashi no Koi wa Fujiya is published by Amu Komi's Comic Mew label. Now, the cool thing is the first ten... Chapters are available to read online through the Mecha Comic Online Manga website. And I've actually looked at it. It's actually a pretty... Well, I'll leave it for a review because I'm actually going to put this on the wheel of manga soon. And i got to say, it's one which, as someone who has to wear glasses, I can relate to. Anyway, other news. Uh, the mangaka of the, of the series Kingdom, the creator uh, Yasuhisa Hara, announced on Twitter... Well, pretty much confirming that he divorced in March and admitted to committing adultery. Now, uh, Yasuhisa Hara was married in 2006 and has three children with his former wife. Now, according to his statement, which was translated, I extend my deepest apologies to the readers and those around me whom I have inconvenienced recently. As was written in part of a weekly magazine, I divorced in March this year. I was unable to treat my family with the care they deserve. I used work as an excuse instead of properly talking things out with my wife who supported me. 
I acknowledge that the people around me was hurt by my dishonest actions, and I am currently reflecting deeply on what I have done. I re- truly regret that I was dishonest towards my family. I cannot turn back time, but from now on I will live life with a desire to atone. I'm sure that there are many readers who are feeling disappointed. I am deeply sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. I am sorry for inconveniencing everyone who's con- supported me, and I extend the deepest apologies from my heart. Now, do you believe this? Do you buy it? Um, well, one, at least he admitted that it happened months ago, but the fact he was kind of caught doing what he was doing, it doesn't excuse him. Uh, he had three kids with his wife, and they were married for over 14 years, so it's kind of messed up, but... Anyway, the reason why this all came to head was in August of this year, 26-year-old television talent Riko Kojima said on a radio show that she was currently in a relationship with Hara, which led to questions about what's going on, I thought you were married, and well, part of me wants to be like, yeah, he could change, but the other part of me is like, yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, I personally think he could have worked things out before doing something dumb, because marriage is something you have to work at, and... Every day you have to work hard at it, and I want to be a person who can do that as well. I think that everyone should. But on the other hand, him cop, him explaining what happened, I do give him some credit for that. He did come up and own that it was his problem. So that's, you know, something that you could put on his side. But anyway, enough of this. Now let's get on some other news. This one's kind of sad also. Um, manga creator Okayado, the creator of Monster Masume, announced on Sunday on his Twitter account that his 12 beast manga has been canceled. Now I'm not going to go over all the things that happened, but pretty much due to stress and other reasons and his editor kind of pushing him to finish Monster Masume. He just became very anxious, unable to draw, got writer's block and he didn't want to leave a work half finished since he's unable to wall. So he decided to cancel 12 beasts. Now, for those of you who don't know, 12 Beasts is released by Seven Seas in English, and it's about a kid named Toga Ita, who is the heir to the Toga-style ninjutsu dojo. He loves video games, and he's someone who like, wants to save his own skin. He's never kissed a girl, but then one day a really hot harpy with wings shows up and tells him that she needs his help in her world called Reverse, and they're going to fight these evil giant robots called Gigas, and then he's going to, well, meet Monster Girls. So it's kind of a more shown any version of Monster Masume. But yeah, it's been cancelled, which really does suck. Uh anyway. Other news. Um well, well this is another kind of rough news, but officially the Drops of God manga, which we talked about that's ending in the last couple episodes, they have an official date for it's ending in six chapters, with the final chapter being released in October of twenty twenty. So we'll finally find out. Will our main character get his inheritance? Will he save the day or Will he be stuck living as a bum and lose everything to his quote-unquote adopted brother? Well, we're going to have to wait and find out. Uh, So anyway, uh, also over the weekend we had Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. A lot had happened. Unlike a lot of the other virtual conventions that did do VOD, this one said, oh, you can watch it for 24 hours, and then they got rid of it, which does kind of suck. But there were some cool panels And more importantly than that, there was a lot going on. Also, we got lots of manga news. Uh, Surprisingly, some of the newer companies that we've been hearing a lot about have said nothing but the big ones. First off, you have Mangamo App. They announced that they were releasing four new mangas to their subscription service, with two of them officially debuting in English on the app. So the first one we have, the first of the new ones, is Dead Dias, Hero of the Dead. This is by Mori Kataro. And it's an exciting new shonen manga that um, is a post-apocalyptic action tale that where humanity is plagued by the undead reversed and no one can stand up against them. No one except Xian Chan, a high school girl from another time, and she's been resurrected to fix this rotten world with her maiden fists. Now, the cool thing is that Mori Kotaro is the artist for the manga adaptation for Gurren Lagann, so this is going to look amazing. Actually, really excited to check this one out. The next one is My Evil Stepbrother by Tomu Shinonome. And this is kind of a story that's going to span the genres of drama, high school, and real life. And it tells the story of Satonoi, the lonely daughter of a mom who's always working. She's so afraid of being alone, she self-isolates to prevent anyone from ever leaving her. 
And when her mom suddenly remarries, she gains a new older stepbrother who only wants to hang out with his friends. And the thing is that all Satono wants is a family. So there's this whole dynamic. Are they going to be able to work this out? Or are they going to just hate each other? Or who knows? We'll find out. So the other two manga that they announced, which have come out already, are Araminthar Garad and Araminthar Garad Flag of Blue Skies. These are both by Mayumi Azuma. And this is a shonen action sci-fi manga that launched a really popular anime franchise. Have you ever seen this? Now, to explain it, Sky Pirates discover a bounty who's a living weapon. And then the after the bounty's been kidnapped... They end up actually going to save the day, and it leads to a huge, awesome series. There's 96 chapters, all of it's on Manga Mo, and the sequel series is pretty decent. We've had it on the Weedle Manga before, but we never actually used it. But hey, maybe it'll come up sometime soon. Anyway, other licensing news. Viz Media released one big thing, that on February 16, 2020, they're going to be releasing the first volume of Mimoji Karada's Assassin's Creed Blade of Shao Jun manga. Now, this is a, quote-unquote, official side story to the Assassin's Creed story, and it takes place in 1526 AD in China. It's during the Great Ming Empire, and, well, even though all the political things are happening with the Emperor... Uh, Xiao Jun is now China's last assassin, and she's escaping to Europe, and she wants to return to her homeland to get revenge. So one part, um, I don't want to say Kill Bill, I'd rather say um, Lady Snowblood, but, you know, a little bit of Lady Snowblood, a little bit of Assassin's Creed. This could be good. Uh, the art style's a little weird for me, but it might be intriguing. Now, the big one is Yen Press. Yen Press's announcements were crazy. They announced that they have nine manga and light novel licenses and releases, and all of them are going to be released in February 2020. So February 2020, we're going to get an absurdly large amount of manga and light novels. So, for the list. The first one is Hokenshitsu no Otaku Onesan wa Suki Deska, or Do You Like the Nerdy Nurse by Arata Kawabata. And, well, the description is, The beauty is in the nurse's office is a secret nerd who doesn't hide it very well. Nijiko Momoyama is the newly appointed school nurse, but beneath her gorgeous facade lies an unmistakable love for all things geeky. Do You Love the Nerdy Nurse is a romantic comedy manga that includes many fun otaku references in addition to a pretty nurse. Now, this is going to be a one standalone volume, so it's the entire series for one price. This could be good, or it could be bad. The art looks nice for it. Next you have Love and Heart or Koei to Shinzo. This is by Chitose Kaido. And well, the official thing is, sure university freshman Yagi Sawa has a lot on her plate, but the last thing she expected to add was a surprise male roommate. Handsome Haruma claims to be a childhood friend, but for some reason Yagi Sawa doesn't remember him at all. And his history isn't the only oddity. Disturbing things begin to happen, and Yagi Sawa may really be in over her head. Love and Heart is a manga series that falls under the category of shoujo horror. And it's kind of cool because this is a subgenre that really doesn't make it to uh, the U.S. world or the, you know, the Western world. So could be really cool, could be really bad. Um, I think it's about yokai, so I'm excited for this one. Next one is Days on FES by Konata Oka. And this is about a high schooler, Konata Sora, who takes her classmate... Otaha Yamana on their first rock festival and the experience is greater than they could ever imagine it's a new life of rocking out so it's gonna be one of those music mangas that could be really good especially if they depict the music well or more importantly list the music that they have in the scene in the manga we're gonna have to wait and see what that Next one is straight up a yokai romance and slice of life. And this is The Girl Without a Face or Kaga na Onanoko. And this is by Teron Taran. And this is, uh, it's got the weirdest blurb ever. Her boyfriend thinks she's the cutest girl around, but her expressions can be a little hard to read. The Girl Without a Face is a cute yet eccentric manga about a boy and his faceless girlfriends. With horror elements such as the presence of yokai and a slice of life storyline, The Girl Without a Face appeals to fans of both categories of manga. So, 
This one seems like it's a more just straightforward version of what Love and Heart is. I don't know. I'm going to check them both out and hopefully we'll be able to review them on the podcast. I Can't Reach You, Kimi ni wa Toko Kanai, and this is by Mika. And this is a, as they say, it's a sweet boy's love series. It's a budding romance between two friends with a well-paced slice of life story between two guys, Yamato and Kekiro, and they're complete opposites. Yamato gets good grades, he's very attractive, while Kakiro, he's kind of, not homely, but he, he's, he's just perfectly average in his looks, and his grades are terrible. And the problem is that he's in love with Yamato, and now Kikoro has to figure out how to get Yamato to look at him when he's out of his league. So, it could be a, a coming-of-age story. Don't know. Anyway, Play Cool Guys, or Cool Dojo Dansha, by Kokone Nata. Now, this one sounds super dorky, but I love it. It's uh, The description is, Enter! A bunch of cool guys who look like they got that unappropriate, unapproachable swag. But let's be real, that's not the true them. They're just a bunch of dorks who's got the act part down. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy watching a bunch of goofy guys try to look cool all day, every day. Play It Cool Guys is a fun collection of stories featuring guys that are equal part cools and equal parts adorkably awkward. So, could be really cute or could be terrible. I don't know. Uh, that one sounds like a lot of fun, especially because it's an anthology. So, Now, the cool thing about this one is that Yen Press is publishing the manga in full color because the series was originally released in Japan in full color. So this one could be worth it. Uh, you got Penguin Gentleman or Penguin Shishi by Kisi Ueno. And this is about a secret bar. And at the secret bar, the Penguin Gentleman works there wearing their long tail tuxedos. You say it's cute how penguins waddle around? Hmm. We're not just cute. We're dandy, sexy, and marvelous. This sounds absurd, and the art is really weird. I don't know if they're real penguins. I don't know if they're just weirdos who wear tuxes. I have no idea who the demographic is for. Part of me is like, it's Bara, but it's not Bara. It's, it's, I don't know who this is for. Anyway. Uh, last manga is Virgin Road, or Shokei Shoujo no Ikeru Michi. And this is actually a light novel. By Matosato with art by Nalistu. And this one is about the lost ones. The, they're these wanderers that come from a distant land known as Japan. No one knows how or why they left their homes. The only thing that is certain is that when they appear, they bring disaster and calamity. The duty of exterminating the lost ones without remorse falls to Menuo, a young executioner. However... One day when she meets Akira, it seems like it's just another job until she discovers it's impossible to kill this girl. And when Mono begins a search for a way to defeat this immortal, Akira is more than happy to tag along. So begins a journey that will change the Menno forever. In addition to being an intriguing addition to the Izakai genre, it's an intriguing release due to the fact that it includes elements not commonly seen in light novels released in English. A female protagonist and a Yuri storyline. So, could be... Well, it's going to be pretty good, I think. Uh, but, I don't know. Last one is officially, for those of you who are fans of this, Date Alive, the light novel by Kosei Tachiban with art by Sunako. Yes, Date Alive is officially being released over here. Now, for those of you who don't know, Date Alive is about the world. It has been wrecked by massive quakes of an unknown origin for years. But life is going on. Our main character, Shido Itsuki's life changes forever when in the middle of a quake he meets a girl who's apparently a spirit and she's the cause of all the destruction. And now he's embroiled in a war to protect the spirits that cause problems by making them fall in love with him. Yeah. So it's, I can save the world by making spirits fall in love with me. It's weird. Anyway. So that's their announcements from Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. However, there was one more announcement that they did a couple days ago, and that was that they licensed Shinichi Gakuin Naito Tetsuya Monogatari, or New Japan Academy, which is a wrestling manga. It's about a New Japan pro wrestling teenager, Tetsuya Naito, who's aiming for the top of New Japan Academy. But in order to be the champion, he has to fight the formidable students like Rainmaker, Kasuchika Okada and the once in a century talent Hiroshi Tanaka. Luckily for him, he has the boys in Los Ingorobales de Japan on his side. No matter the odds, Naito's 
motto remains the same. Tranquilo or quiet. Now this is a highly anticipated release because a lot of pro wrestling fans love it because it's huge. Uh, so it could be good, it could be terrible, who knows. So in other news, on October 20th, Aiki Shimizu is launching a new manga titled Inugami Ri that's based on Masaya Hokazono's Inugami manga. Now there's no word on what magazines can be serialized in or what's going on. But it is a sequel to the original Inagami series and its sequel, Inagami Kai, that was serialized in Kodansha's Afternoon Magazine. So we can assume it may be an afternoon, but who knows. Now, it's about a dog that has the ability to heal quickly, grow blades from his back, and he's going to watch over humanity. Now, him and his friend Fumiko, who they meet in a abandoned building, and he ends up like protecting him. So this is a sequel, so I'm curious if it's about Fumiko or if it's about a different human that is with Inugami. Gonna have to wait and see. Now on October 6th, a lot is happening. First off, uh, Maki Fujita, the mangaka of Yokosoku wa Toshoka no uh, Katsumi De, or The Promise Was Made in the Corner of the Library, is launching a new spiritual suspense manga entitled Hiro no Uta, or The Scarlet Malediction. Now this is going to be released in Akita Shoten's Monthly Princess Magazine, and it's going to center on Chika, a girl who loses her mother and soon after encounters supernatural incidents. Could be good, could be bad, who knows. Now, this is an oldie but goldie because uh, Masahito Soda and Kuro Tomiyama are launching a spin-off to... Firefighter Daigo of Fire Company M, or Megumi no Daigo. And this is a spinoff with a new title, Megumi no Daigo Kyoko no Orange, or Firefighter. Daigo of Firefighter M, the Orange of National Salvation. And this is going to be released in Kodansha's monthly shonen magazine. Now, for those who don't know, Firefighter, I'm just going to call it Firefighter was published by Viz Media with all 20 volumes, and it is a crazy, weird story about firefighters who put their lives on the lines, and our main character, Daigo, has seen him, dreamed of becoming one. He's fresh out of the training academy, and he's been assigned to the Merakaga Hama Fire Station. And he's a typical shonen main character, cocky, overconfident, and he's quickly humbled being on the job but he's still got a lot to learn before he calls himself a true firefighter now if you like fire force or if you like promare this is the origin of it so you're going to want to check this series out the original one was well it's kind of weird guilty pleasure but whatever last thing for october 6th uh chika shiomo the mangaka of yukarism yuara is launching a new manga titled ame no ore no siren or the siren of the rain cage this can be released in Akita Shoten's Mystery Bonita magazine. And this is a spinoff of Chika Shuyoma's Key Jack manga series. And it's going to center on an ace police detective named Ninomiya. That's all we know about it. Who knows? Now, on September 11th, Miki Aihara is launching a new manga spinoff of the From 5 to 9 or Goji Karakuji Made magazine. Uh... Now, this is going to be released in Shokokuken's and Flower magazine, and it's going to be titled Elevator Orita Hidare uh, Fise to, 5 to uh, 9 Next Door, or Left When You Get Off the Elevator 5 to 9 Next Door, and it's going to be focusing on a new but struggling 28-year-old manager of a share house. Now, the original from 5 to 9 manga centered on a 27-year-old lecturer at an English conversation school named Junko Sakuraba, who has no boyfriend, her parents kept setting her up on marriage interviews for her when, uh, with a man who turns out to be a Buddhist monk, and she has no intention of becoming a temple wife, so she refuses to do the interview, and then the Buddhist monk ends up signing up to become her private student so he can get with her. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of romantic, kind of weird, a little stalkery, but yeah, that's actually going to be on the Wheel of Manga too. But anyway. So that was the news for the week. Let me know what you were most interested in and what excited you most or what horrified you the most. I'm kind of excited for some of the manga that came out and the news about Drops of God we're getting a finale. That's actually really cool. 
they're actually this long running series may have a conclusion which works it's not just dropped but on the same token finding out that that other series was canceled does suck anyway so now let's actually get to the main reason why we do this podcast and that is the review of the episode and so if you remember from the last episode i spun that one that only the wheel of manga and it dictated to be there reviewing every manga that was written by chika umino this is published by Shuisha, brought over here by Viz Media. Uh, it's actually released in the Shoujo Beat line. It is a Jose series that originally ran 2000 to 2006 with 10 volumes and 8 live action TV series, an anime series, and a sequel anime series. And this is a coming of age romance series that is known simply as Hachimitsu to Kuroba or Honey and Clover. So to explain Honey and Clover, you have three guys who live in an apartment complex and they're students at an art college in Tokyo. And then they're introduced to the, well, it's kind of like a second cousin to one of their art professors who's now living there and she's now a first year art student at the school. And two of the three guys fall in love with her and they're dealing with this. Also, you have a, a, a couple other secondary characters, but it's focusing on these four characters as they go through life and as they're moving forward in life and each one is different and varied so our first character the main one you could say is yuda yuda takimoto and he's a second year student who's in currently in the uh, architecture design but he wants to move to other things and he's the point of view character who is well the most mellow of all the characters he's the one that's mo- the most together i would say and he he's super loyal whenever they need help he's the one that they ask for help so if you want to use an analogy in the series oh my goddess uh keichi the main character was kind of the runt of the auto club how they'd have him do things and like bully him into doing it uh yuda is kind of like that except that he's not bullied he's just told to do this and he does it because he can uh, the next of the three college students you have is Shinobu Morita. Now, Shinobu Morita is essentially Van Wilder. He is at a four-year college, and he's a sixth-year student. He keeps failing because he keeps missing one class and falling asleep in it. So he keeps going to this class, missing the class, and because of his absences, he has not been able to graduate. So he's missing one credit. And he is a super slacker. Like, he's very intelligent, very good at his artwork, which is a lot of photography, a lot of computer design. He's very intelligent, but he also disappears for days on end. Why he disappears, we don't know. But he disappears, comes back with a wad of cash, and brings food and gifts for his roommates. So we don't know what his deal is. But he's just... Also a little bizarre with some of the things he does. Well, once we get into me talking about the girl, it'll make more sense. Then the last of the three college students that we first meet is Takumi Mayama. Now, he is the kind of straight man. He's a fourth-year art student, 22 years old, lives in the same story. He acts as senpai to Yuta, and also he's like the stabilizing element for Morita. He's the one that helps him get up early. Not really. And he's trying to keep things steady like he's like okay listen if you don't want marita to beat you up here's what you need to do okay you're gonna do this did it work no take a picture here okay now if you show it to him you can kind of block it and he won't be as pissed as you tried that's his deal now the last person we have to talk about is the eponymous girl that everyone is fighting over we're talking about hagumi hanamoto or hagu and she is an 18-year-old first-year art student who is amazing with her art. She is super well-known. Uh, museums contractor, uh, businesses contractor for her amazing art. She is very engaging and very accomplished with her work. However, she is not... Her personality isn't like that. She acts like a little girl. She actually looks like a little girl and she acts childish and she plays with dolls still and she's a little weird. And she's also super short. Like if y- Utah is five foot four, she's like four foot eight. I think she's a certified midget. Not sure. But 
everyone is in love with her. And Yuta sees her when they first meet and he's like, oh my god, I think I'm in love. You're amazing and sweet and wonderful. And he's he's shy about it though. He doesn't bring up that he likes her. He just kind of, he's super nice to her. Then on the other hand, Shinobu Morita, when he sees her, he falls in love with her, but he goes in an insanely different route. Like he sees her, runs out of the room, runs outside, runs to the other side of campus, grabs a a huge leaf, comes back in and says, hold this. And they start taking pictures of her saying, oh, she's a Korobochi, which is like a little forest spirit that the Ainu tribe believed existed. And then he spends like weeks just taking pictures of her like on mushrooms and other things just to like kind of humiliate her and bully her. But he's doing it for art because he actually is in love with her. But no one gets that he's in love with her. They're just kind of like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why are you bullying her? And he does care about her in really insane ways. Like, um, we found out that Hagu is very poor. She's from a poor family. She was raised by her grandmother and her mother. And uh, she has a book that a lot of little girls have, according to Greta. It's a thing. Things you can't buy, you cut them up and you put them into a scrapbook. And it's like your wish list. And she had a pair of really expensive shoes in there called Mules, which that's really weird why they're called Mules. I don't know why. Maybe it's the design. If you know what it is, let me know. Email me at zanspiker.com. Anyway, the minute that uh, Shinobu sees that she wants a pair of these shoes, after he does his clodestine, whatever, he ends up buying the shoes just straight up in cash. Like, they look at him like he's a lunatic because he hasn't slept in three days. And he's like... Hey, do you have something that'll fit this? And he pulls out like a statue foot that he made of her foot, like a, a clay copy of her foot. And says, do you have something that'll fit this? This shoe? It's like, yeah, okay, weirdo. We do have it, but it's 32,000 yen. And he's like, will you take cash? And he just pulls out a wad of cash, like, okay. <laughs> and they look at him like, oh, he bought something, cool. Because he's super rich, like when he makes money. And then he stumbles back to the... Thing, gives her the shoes and her who's being afraid of him is now like oh yeah you got me shoes i got shoes yeah you're my friend and they become friends in this really weird relationship now i will say the first volume doesn't focus too much on the relationship aspect actually hagu only shows up for like seven pages or ten pages the rest of it is about them dealing with college life and them being poor like the fact they don't have real food like they eat uh soba noodles every night Except for when they can afford meat. And usually it's because uh, Marita shows up and he had got paid for a job. And he's like, here, I can buy you meat or I can buy you croquettes. And then they use that for food. Or if someone comes home from their home, you know, for their parents' house, they go to visit. And they come back with food. Like, they bring meat and then they can eat meat. Otherwise, they're kind of starving. And it's running jokes with that or the fact that one of their neighbors worked at a at a farm for ham and he'd bring ham every single day and then he disappears and like oh no you left we can't have meat anymore oh no and it is just essentially college life when he dormed at college if you've ever been to college you totally can relate with these characters there are days when you have no money your your card for your dinner plan didn't go through or your payment didn't go through or you didn't you're you're waiting on payday, you have no money, so you're eating essentially like breadcrumbs, or you're eating Pop-Tarts or like dollar ninety nine uh, cup of soup ramen. You're just like super just hungry. That happens. Also dealing with the tension of, oh, you have to go to class. It's really early in the morning. If you oversleep again, you're going to be kicked out of class. But you're so tired, you're going to sleep. And everyone tries to wake you up, and they can't wake you up. It's little things like that that connect, and they resonate with you. And there are other characters, like one of the other characters is a Yumi, who is a third year student who is known as the Iron Lady, who has issues with main characters. We're not going to get into why, but she literally will beat the hell out of them up. And uh, it's kind of funny, like them trying to get out of it, like uh, Marita gets caught by her. She's like, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm going to beat you up. It's like, hey, how's Taru talking about her dog? And it's like, no, I don't want to hear about that. I'm going to kick your ass. So the series is a little, it's a slice of life, but it's got an overarching plot. Now, I don't want to go, It's since it's been a couple of years, I could totally spoil this series. Cause it is at heart about passion and love. And not just love in a romantic sense, it's love for what you do. And it cultivates that in a very 
well, mature fashion that's well done and it's really memorable. Now, if you ever watch the anime, most people can't make it fast the first three episodes because the way they depict Hagu is kind of rough. She's depicted like an annoying little girl who, like, she's in college, but she's acting like a five-year-old and acting really stupid, so you can't really get into that. The manga is a much better and more refreshing take on it. And I've got to say that Chika Umino did a great job depicting this story about three people in love and them dealing with it. Now... The resolution for this manga leaves much to be desired, in my opinion. I think, I mean, I can respect it, but I feel it was kind of a bit of a cop-out. That's my take on it. But it is a series about love. The art style is amazing. I love how immaculate certain scenes are. Like, the art is immaculately done. All the different designs for it. For example, when Hagu's working on one of her statues after she has a freak out, it looks so intricate and and, and well developed and just perfectly uh, refined. You, you you're fascinated by it and you want to look more into it. And all the designs are just very just not whimsical, but they're just they have that Jose style that just fits so well. It's clean. It's yeah, it's done by computer art, but it has little touches here and there that make it feel more just. I don't want to say hand drawn, but yeah, a little more homey, I gotta say. So, art is great. Characters are hysterical. Like, just the antics that uh, Marita does are so bizarre that you're like, what the hell is wrong with you? And also, there's the whole thing of his mysterious job where he disappears and then comes back with money. It's almost like um, number two in uh, Mace on Ikoku where you never find out his job ever. But he has money and you don't know what he does. Like he could be a drug dealer, he could be a mob boss, you don't know. This one, you know he's working with somebody else. Eventually you do find out what's going on, but for a long time you have no idea what he is doing. So, gotta say that's that's where it is. And for that reason, for all the reasons I've said, um, it's a really powerful series that's well done, it's mature, it's... Almost like, I saw this in a different article, which explained it perfectly, and I'm going to crib from them, that if you like Azumanga Daio because of the relatability of the high school life, you're going to love this series because you can relate to it for the college life, if that makes sense. So this is a relatable college series. If you've been to college, you'll understand it completely. If you haven't been to college, you could kind of get what's going on. You, You might not appreciate it as much. Now, the other thing is that this one, I recommend the manga 100% over the anime. The anime is rough. I mean, it's beautiful, it's well done, and it does compress the story, but it's really rough. It's it's like, it takes you five episodes to get into it. The manga, though, it's appreciative, it's great, and for that reason, I have to give this a bar from a friend and don't return on a soft for Pocky. It's really good. It's just that it's not for everybody, and there are some... Things which are issuable. Like I said, Hagu, it's weird that she is. She acts like a little girl, yet she's in college. Eventually, she do, they do fix that, but it just it's a weird reason. I wonder why they depicted her like that. I mean, there's a reason in the manga, but I just it feels like it's a weird choice that uh, Umino-san did. Anyway, that's my opinion on it. If you've read this and disagree, email me, zan at spyrokin.com. Also on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and all those other social media sites. And now that that's out of the way, let's actually get to the second to last thing we do on this podcast. And that's the manga releases for the week. And we've got 23 releases that came out on September 8th. And they're all varied and really cool. So for this list, we've got Adachi and Chimamaru, the Delight Novel, Volume 2. Aposims, the manga, Volume 5. Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, Volume 2, the manga. Clover, the hardcover edition by Clamp, this is the manga complete edition. Uh, Failed Princess, Volume 2. Fly Me to the Moon, Volume 1. Gal Gohan, Volume 4. Kuma 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 Bear, the manga, Volume 2. Which, Kuma 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 Bear is getting an anime adaptation and... Now, I know that I was really hard on the manga in my review of it, but 
in hindsight, it's not that bad. It's okay. I'm excited to see the anime, actually, because, I don't know, just, I think it could be funny seeing the giant bears, but anyway. You have uh, Monster Girl Doctor, the light novel, volume six, uh, which is really pervy and I'm not a fan of it. Uh, Mozoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, the manga, volume 11. You have Peter Grill in the Philosopher's Time, volume two, the manga, another porn manga. Anyway, um, Pokemon Sun and Moon, volume eight. Renee, volume 35. Sailor Moon Eternal Edition, volume nine. Sarah Zanmai, the light novel, volume one. Skeleton Knight in Another World, the light novel, volume 6, and the manga. Uh, Splatoon, volume 10. The Dungeon of Black Company, volume 5. The Great Jahi Will Not Be Defeated, volume 1, the manga. The Ideal Sponger Life, volume 6. The Seven Deadly Sins, volume 39. And Wandering Witch, volume 2. So that's a pretty good list for the day. Now the ones I'm excited for are Ideal Sponger's Life, Great Jahi Will Not Be Defeated, um... Rene, Volume 35, uh, Shura Zanmai, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, and then um, Oppose Him. Now, the ones I'm not really excited for are uh, Monster Girl Doctor and Peter Grill, because those are just straight up porn. Not a fan of it. People who have been really liking the anime, which came out, I just, yeah, it's just, <sighs> I don't know who made, who came up with it, but whatever. So that's my thoughts. If you disagree with me, email me, zanspirekin.com, or message me at Spirekin. Let me know what you think. Also, we do have on our Discord site, you do have all the section for manga, our manga review section on the Discord site, and you can actually go there and uh, comment on what you are interested in. And to get there is really easy. All you have to do is go to discord.org forward slash or sorry, discord.gg forward slash uu42kfr. That's https colon slash slash discord.gg forward slash uu42kfr. Go there, join in, check out the manga site, and let us know what you think which one of these you were most excited for, or which ones do you think were not worth your time. Also, you could comment on the next thing which is happening, which is the most popular part of this podcast. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. What is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it, and each of the slots represents a manga that's on this list, which you can look at the Discord site. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin that one that only the Wheel of Manga, whatever number it lands on, the manga that is connected to that number is the one that we're reviewing in the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review, episode 386. So let's spin and see what we're reviewing in the next episode, shall we? Number nine. Oh, so in the next episode, we're going to be talking about a manga, which is about kind of adopted brotherly sisterly love. What are we talking about? We're talking about domestic girlfriend. So is it good? Is it bad? Well, we're going to have to wait and see how that goes. Well, anyway, hope you guys enjoy this episode. I love doing this podcast and I hope that you guys have fun listening to it. I'll talk to you guys next time. I'm your host, Zan. I'm